Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. I'm just going to run through the latest open beta patch updates and in that there are some 124 new World War II missions. They're suitable for the beginner through to the seasoned veteran. Not all the missions require the World War II assets pack so that welcomes the potential new starters to DCS World War II. And there are missions available across all of the DCS Warbirds. There are three maps that are catered for, so that's the Caucasus, Channel Map, and the Persian Gulf. So let's start with the missions. So the new World War II instant action missions are starting in the Caucasus map. There are 24 missions in total. Uh, and like I said before, no asset pack is required. And the primarily foc or the primary focus for this is for those who don't currently own. A DLC map at all at the moment um, but it also should appeal to DCS World War 2 veterans as well. I'll explain why. All briefings and mission content is World War 2 channel map orientated just to maintain that ETO European Theatre of Operations feel to the missions and all of them contain voiceovers, voiced briefs and selectable difficulty level options easy medium or hard via the F10 menu. So that's why it caters for seasoned veterans and new starters. So that's the Caucasus map taken care of. What other map do we have? We have instant action missions in the Persian Gulf and there are a further 24 missions there. And again, the assets pack is not required for any of the instant action missions. So the primary focus for this one is those that don't own a World War II DLC map. Um, and again, new starters it's aimed at as well as the veterans. All briefings and mission content is World War II North Africa stroke Malta based, um, in most cases as a what if scenario for the different plane sets that we have. Again, they all contain voiceovers, voice briefs, difficult level options, all selectable via the F10 menu. The next set of instant action missions have been set up in the channel map, the new channel map. And in total there are 51 missions and again the asset pack is not required for any of these missions. Again the primary focus here is for those who decided to purchase the channel map and it goes for new starters and hardened DCS World War II pilots. All the briefings and mission content in this instance is historically based as you can see from the listings. Again, they all contain voiceovers, voice briefs, difficulty level options, all selectable via the F10 menu. With the difficulty level settings, you can set it to your preference. Uh, if you're a veteran, try it on hard. And if you're a new starter, try it on easy first. So they're the instant action missions. And we also have new single player missions. And there are 25 missions in total across the two maps, which is the Persian Gulf and the Channel Map. And again, in this particular instance, some of these missions are FWAF compatible. Now that FWAF stands for Fly with a Friend. And basically it means that they can be flown online with a person or people of your choosing. Just depends whether the mission contains a um, wingman or three wingmen or four wingmen. All briefings and mission content is historically based. As you can see, DICE emissions, sinking merchantmen, that sort of thing. Atlantic wall attacks. Again, they all contain voiceovers and voice briefs, and some may contain a difficulty level option, uh, but they'll be few and far between. So that wraps up all of the missions. Like I say, 124 in total. So a lot to get your teeth into there. And I think everyone's being catered for, from new starter to veteran pilot. So let's move on to the next thing. Okay, so let me show you how to set up the FWAF mission, which is the fly with a friend. Essentially, you need to locate where the actual missions are. And for the Spitfire, I know they're in the Open Beta, Eagle Dynamics, Open Beta 2.5. It's under Mods, Aircraft, Spitfire, Missions, and Single. And as you can see, we've got the Spitfire, Atlantic Wall, and DICE Emission. And we also have the Atlantic Wall and DICE Emission for the Clipping version. So what I would then do is create a copy, move it from 
there to my saved games missions folder because that's where all your missions are going to end up anyway when you create them. It's also simpler to be able to load them up into DCS. So what I will do is just for argument's sake we'll copy the Atlantic Wall version and that's just moving it sorry so what we'll do is we'll get a copy and we'll paste it into here. And if we do the dice emission as well, so we create a copy and paste it into here. And that's you ready to rock and roll and set up the FWAF mission. So let's stop there and I'll take you into DCS and show you how that works. And here we are in DCS. And you're going to want to fly with a friend, so you're going to have to go into multiplayer. So let's click on multiplayer. Let's click on at the bottom of the screen new server. And there we go. Here's, here's my server. And what we need to do now is load the mission into your personal public server. So what we'll do is we'll click on the plus sign. And this automatically goes to my save games, open beta, missions. So that's why we copied them across. So it's easily located. So what I'll do is I'll click on the dice mission and click OK. And then what you do is you start the server. Obviously, in the interim, you're talking with your mate, your friend, your pal, whatever you want to call them, um, and you've arranged for them to try and find your server and then start the mission. All we'll do is we'll click Start. And now here we are in the server. And as you can see, you've got single player, flight lead, and slot one, friend slot friend one now basically all you do is you join the two slots your mate goes into the next slot and then click on briefing and we find ourselves in the mission itself now if you were playing single player it's a different story um, you would set something else up and I'll show you how to do that but as it currently stands here in multiplayer your mate would join you and his aircraft would spawn next to you. So that means that you can now fly the entire mission, two of you, together. As soon as that slot is accessed by your friend, the mission brief will start. And that's basically how you fly it online with a friend. So let me show you now the process for flying it as a single player, not online. Now if you just wanted to play that same mission by yourself, not online, then obviously you would click on mission. You would have the Spitfire selected. You would then go to the relevant line here, which is Photo Recon of the 543 Squadron Dice Mission. And we'll click on that and we'll click OK. And then that will automatically load in. So let's join the aircraft. And here we are, it's loaded in. Now you're presented with the screen very similar to the uh, multiplayer. But obviously it's a single player environment this time round. So what you would do is you want to fly as the flight lead. So you just click on single player flight lead and click OK. So now you're presented with the briefing as standard. And it tells you what's required. So a World War II assets pack is required to fly this mission. It's SWAF compatible, which I've just shown you. Um, and visual formation signals are used in this mission. And then there's all the briefing images that go with that. Um, these are all selectable in the multiplayer as well. So it's that simple and straightforward. So you can read the mission briefs, the objective, etc, etc, and click on fly. Using the F-10 comms menu, select AI wingman if you wish to fly in single player mode. So the menu comes up automatically. You just click on F-10 other and select F-1 for select AI wingman click on that and it tells you that the AI wingman has been selected and the mission briefing will start and we just pause it there now as you can see the AI aircraft has spawned in next to you and the mission briefing has started Sir. 
And there you go, you're ready to start the mission. So not only do you get a briefing on the screen, you also get a briefing in the mission, and you can now fly this as single player. So you have multiple options with the single player missions. So in the vast majority of cases, you'll be able to fly with a friend because there will be a wingman in the mission. If I'm unable to do that, say it's an air start, then there won't be a FWAF option. But it will be listed in the uh, briefing anyway, whether it's FWAF compatible. So it's just another added dimension to the World War II missions. And it's really there to entice people into the multiplayer environment um, where they're not so keen to start off in a server as yet but they're quite prepared to fly with a friend and hopefully they'll get used to doing that and then want to progress on to multiplayer so that was the whole idea or ethos behind incorporating this element so I hope you enjoy that okay so let's have a look at another recent addition in the open beta update which is the ability to change coalitions on the fly. For those mission builders who are aware, uh, there was a mod that you had to use historically, uh, but now we don't need to worry about that. Over here, we have three boxes joined by arrows. We just click on there. And then we get the changing coalition screen. Now, the units in the mission that I've got so far are in the UK, and they are the blue coalition. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to select UK, I'm going to hit the red arrow, which means that they will go on the red side. It tells you here, UK is switching from blue to red. There are 53 units in 19 groups, which will switch teams. So it's even telling you how many changes are going to be made. And then all we do is click OK. And there we go. Bang. Those UK units are now on the red team. So that's going to save a lot of time. Let's go back into it. Obviously, pressing undo changes won't do undo any historic changes, but what we can do now is move that back to blue, and it tells us again exactly how many units in how many groups. And if I want to undo that change, because I've made a mistake, let me just press undo and it sends the UK back to the red team. If you make a, a number of mistakes or you're not sure where you've gotten up to, you just simply press cancel and no changes will be made and it comes straight out. That's going to be a complete bonus for mission builders. Well, I hope you found that overview useful and I hope you enjoyed the video. Playing in the background at the moment is a work in progress World War II mission. Just to give you a heads up that nothing has stopped on the World War II mission building front, it continues. So thank you for watching, and I'll catch you later. Ciao for now. Starlight calling Red Leader. Swarm your parrots. Stand by for further updates. Over. Red Leader calling Red Section. Squawk your parrots, chaps. Over. Two, we'll go. Do 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 do